Hi, I'm Sean Duggan. And in this installment of the Lightroom Viewfinder, I want to focus on one of the more important things for new and even not so new Lightroom users. Making sure that when you import images into your Lightroom catalog, that they go exactly where you want them to go, with no surprises, no mystery and confusion, and without the creation of unnecessary and redundant folders. The first step to taking control of the import process really has nothing to do with Lightroom and everything to do with just being very familiar with how your images are organized on your hard drives. You should know what the folder structure for your image archive looks like because that folder structure will match the folders that you see listed in the folders panel in Lightroom. One of the more common things that I've seen when I've been helping people get their Lightroom catalogs organized are folders that are obviously in the wrong place. Typically these are redundant folders such as multiple 2014 folders inside the main 2014 folder or even folders from other years that are placed inside the folder for a completely different year. If you've ever had this happen to you, the solution to this problem can be found in the import dialog. So let's head there now. Now I already have a memory card connected to my computer and you can see that in the source column on the left hand side of the import dialog. This is of course where you specify where the pictures are coming from that you're importing into Lightroom. And I'm just going to be using the regular copy option for this import. And let me point out that I'm not going to be going over every aspect of the import dialog in this particular movie. I already have a previous episode of the Lightroom Viewfinder where I do cover this dialog in a lot more detail. So for this movie what I want to do is pay particular attention to the destination panel. Because if there are problems about where images are being imported to or images being imported into locations where you didn't want them to go, the solution is always going to be found in the destination panel. Now you may have heard a saying that goes something like this, the journey is more important than the destination. Now in terms of travel or personal growth and discovery, that very well may be the case, but when it comes to importing images into your Lightroom catalog, the destination is definitely more important than the journey. So let's take a closer look at the options that are available to us in the destination panel so we can see how the choices that we make here are going to impact where those images are placed on our hard drive. When it comes to the overall organizational structure and harmony of your Lightroom catalog, I feel that the destination panel is arguably the most important set of options here in the import dialog. So it really pays off to become familiar with what those options are and how to set them so that you know that the files are going to the right place. Now, if you don't set anything here when you're importing and you just press the import button, what will happen is the files will be imported to the same location that was used the last time you imported files into Lightroom. Now, of course, that may or may not be the right location, and that's why it is important to double check that. So the first place you can check that is if you come up to the top here of the To section, you can see a little truncated folder path which shows you where those files are going to. In this case, they're going to my original 01 folder and to the 2015 folder because that is the last location that I imported to. For the case of this particular import, that is the correct location. But let's go down and talk about how you would go and specify that if that was not correct. I'm just going to go to my image archive drive. I'm going to drill down to where my image archive folders are. And here you can see the year folders that we saw earlier. These correspond to the exact folder structure out on my hard drive. The 2015 folder is already selected because that is what I last imported to. I'm just going to click on that and open that up so we can see what's going on down there. And notice that there is a new folder that has been added down here. A couple things to notice here about this folder name is that the numbers are in italic text. They're kind of dimmed back a little bit. And then the folder icon has a little plus symbol next to it. So this folder does not currently exist on my hard drive. What this is telling me is that this is the folder that Lightroom will create during the import process. And the name of this folder and whether or not there are any nested folders that are associated with it is determined by these settings up at the top here. The Organize by Date setting and the Date Format setting. 
So let's open up the Organize menu and we can see that we have two choices, Organize by Date or we can choose to organize them into one particular folder. Now that might be useful if you didn't want to organize them by date. So if I chose that option, and let me just click off the 2015 folder and then back onto it. With the Organize into one folder option checked the way I have it now, my pictures would just be placed loose into the 2015 folder. So that wouldn't be too good from an organizational standpoint. I could choose to create a new subfolder and you can see that folder being created down here. Now it's just using the name of the last time I created a subfolder for this process. So in this case, obviously I might want to rename that, but this is how you would import your images into a single folder and give that a new name. I'm going to turn that off here and I'm going to turn back on the option to organize by date and that sets it back to the way I like it. Now let's take a look at the folder name and how that is created. If we open up the date format menu here, we can see that there are four sections which give us different ways to specify the name of the folder and also whether or not there are any nested folders that will be created as a result of this choice. So the first three options will all result in multiple nested folders. The fourth section here will not result in any nested folders. The way you can tell that is that in the first three sections, each of those choices has a forward slash in the way the folder will be named. Each forward slash indicates a new nested folder level. So for instance, if I was to choose this choice here, 2015 slash February slash 11, what's going to happen is Lightroom is going to make each of those folders. You can see it's making a 2015 folder, a February folder, and an 11 folder. Now the problem here is that when you target a folder, Lightroom really can't see what that folder is named. So it's, it, it cannot really look outside the folder and see that the folder is already called 2015. So it makes a new one inside it. And this is the cause of all of these multiple kind of redundantly named folders that you might have run across in your own Lightroom experiences. Now, if I come up one folder level to Originals 01, then it works out okay because Lightroom can look down in this list and see that there already is a 2015 folder and then it creates the proper folders according to the date format that's been chosen. So just be on the lookout for that. If you're like me and you want to keep the number of nested folders to a minimum, choose one of the options here in this fourth section because this will create no nested folders. I'm going to choose this last option here which is a eight digit expression of the date that the image was made just because that's the format that I like to use and I need to specify the right folder because now I'm not in the 2015 folder I'm up in the originals folder so I'll click on 2015 and now it's going into the right place. I should point out that after the import is done I do go and rename the folder similar to something that you see up here I get rid of the first two digits of the date so I just have a six digit expression of the date and then I usually add some descriptive text which tells me uh, what type of images are in that folder. So now that I've gone to all this trouble to specify a date format and make sure the images are going into the right folder, I'm going to save an import preset so I can streamline the process for future imports. To save an import preset, you come down to this black area in the lower center portion of the import dialog. You'll see here it says import preset. And then over here on the right, I can click on this menu where it says none. And then I can choose this option to save current settings as a new preset. I'm just going to give this a name that makes sense. Import to 2015 folder and I'll click create. This now becomes a menu option here that is always going to be available to me when I import to Lightroom. Now one thing I want to point out about that import preset is that I do not have any keywords applied. And that was done consciously here because since I knew I was going to save an import preset, it wouldn't make sense to save specific keywords to that preset. Because of course, the keywords for these particular images would not apply to any other images that I'm going to be importing throughout the rest of the year. The other thing here that was saved as part of the import preset is the fact that I am applying my 2015 copyright notice to 
each of the images, and that has been saved as a part of that preset. Once the preset has been saved, you can, of course, come in and add image-specific keywords for the images that you're importing. When you do add keywords after choosing an import preset, the import preset name down here will say that it has been edited, and that just means that you have changed information that is not saved in the preset. So that's okay. In this case, I'm just going to click the import button and bring those in to my Lightroom catalog. Once the import is done, I typically like to come in and rename the folder so it is something more meaningful than just this string of numbers. And I already have one here from a couple of weeks ago that I haven't gotten to yet, so I'm just going to right click on that folder and choose rename. And I'll just get rid of the first two digits so I have a six digit expression of the date for the year, month, and day. And then I'm also going to add some additional information which describes what the pictures are of or what the location was. So I hope that that was a useful exploration of the destination panel in Lightroom's import dialog and the role that it plays in ensuring that your photos go exactly where you want them to on your hard drive without the creation of multiple redundant nested folders that just add to confusion in your image organization. I'm Sean Duggan and thanks for watching the Lightroom Viewfinder.